Hey everybody, it's Andy with Inland Filament, not in the Maker Lab at Micro Center today. I'm on site at the first ever Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival here in Loveland, Colorado. While everybody's getting set up and getting their booths ready for tomorrow, we thought we'd take the time to go ahead and film putting together this Ender 3 S1 Plus. Let's go ahead and get started by opening the box and taking out all the parts and see what we've got. I found that this foam is actually pretty useful for other things, so I like to hold on to that sometimes. We've got a $10 off coupon for Inland Filament here in the box. We've worked with our partners at Creality to make sure that if you're buying a 3D printer from us, you, you might get that in the box. Looks like we've got a quick start guide and some tips on leveling the printer. You've got your standard tools here, everything you need to put together the printer, including the SD card, the micro SD reader. We've got some sample filament from Creality, but we won't be using that today. We've got plenty of Inland Filament here with us. We've got the power. Looks like the filament part of the filament holder plus the runout sensor. Another part of the filament holder. We've got the hot end here. Direct drive hot end. I'll be honest, I haven't put one of these together, so there's maybe parts that I'm not familiar with. I have put together many, many 3D printers in the past. Uh, but never an Ender 3 S1 Plus. Uh, here's what looks to be the touch screen. I'm guessing it's a touch screen because it doesn't have a knob on it. And it has a little note there about the 230 versus 115 voltage. Make sure anytime you get a 3D printer that's coming from overseas or originating overseas, which is most 3D printers, you're checking the power supply when you go to plug it in. If it doesn't power up, it may be set to the 230 volts, which is meant for other countries than the United States. So make sure it's set over to the 115. Take out this foam block. Uh, and it looks like we're gonna get to the main upper carriage. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that out all together. That was easy. So you've got dual Z rods here tension adjustment for your x-axis over here. Looks solid. We'll put that aside for now. All kinds of extra foam. Again, this foam can be saved and reused for other fun projects. Pull out those two blocks. Put them off to the side for now. And then we're going to pull out the main bottom assembly, and I think that's it. Now we can get rid of the box. Right. Let's clean up and see what we've got. So, let's see what we're going to do first. 3D printers have come a long, long way from when I first started messing with them about 10 years ago in terms of kits that you would be putting together. So the assembly on this is pretty minimal. So I think the first thing we're going to do is attach the x-axis to the bottom with four screws, M5 by 45. So let's get those. There's actually slots. Where these go in. I'm gonna get them started by hand. 
like it does have to be up a little bit off the table. Just start them by hand a little bit, and then we're gonna go around and do the same thing on the other side. And we're gonna tighten these, I like to say monkey tight, not gorilla tight. And I'm gonna tighten them all a bit, and then go back and tighten them all one more time. Next, we're gonna take the display mount and mount it to the side here with three of the M4 by 18 screws. Then we're gonna go ahead and plug the display unit in. Should only go one way. And then slide it down using the keyholes. So satisfying. All right, next we're gonna put the two pieces for the material rack together. You just put it in and turn it, and then it should just clip right on. Boom. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect the filament runout sensor as well. Just like that. It might actually make more sense to put this on the other side. So we'll go ahead and do that. Pretty easy to swap. No tools needed. There we go. All right, we're going a little out of order here because I wasn't reading the instructions well, but they did want us to install the nozzle assembly a little bit earlier. I think we're fine. So I am going to take four of the M3 by six screws and install them here. Just get one to get us started. Now we need to go around to the back of the machine and install the wire clamp. So the wire clamp assembly, the wire clamp piece will slide right on here. I think it's just a press fit. All right, we're gonna cut this wire assembly apart using the included diagonal cutters. Just be careful you don't clip any wires. So I'm just gonna go around the printer now, plugging in the cables where they go. So the first thing I've got is the X motor. It's keyed, so it should only go in one way. And then the X end stop, which should be, can't see it from this angle, but it's up, it's on the front, and there's a little hole for it to go in right over here. All right. They've included a place where it indicates where you should slide it into the wire harness, which is nice like that. Then we're going to run this over. Make sure to not run this up over top. I have the gantry a little high. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open, make sure these two clips are open and go ahead and push it down in. And it should snap together. And then you can feed the cable into the cable holder here, the wire harness, which adds a little bit of strain relief. That should be it. So everything for the nozzle, uh, and the hot end ran along this cable assembly and into the hot end direct drive extruder here. All right, let's go around and make sure all the other things are plugged in that need to be plugged in. So right here I've got the Z-axis motor, which I'm gonna go ahead and plug in. Again, it's keyed. And then I'm gonna go around to this side and make sure to plug in this Z motor as well, which there should be a cable. It's taped down for transport, so all you have to do is pick that up and go ahead and plug it in.
We also need to plug in the filament runout sensor cable, which is tucked into the gantry over here. So we're going to have to cut it loose and then plug it in down here. I do want to do a check on the power supply and verify that it's set on 115. So I'm going to remove this little sticker. Right now it's set to 230. So I'm going to grab one of the small Allen wrenches, reach in there and switch it over. And there it is, hard to see, but the little detent is over to the right now. We had a great time at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival in Loveland, Colorado, and we can't wait to get back there next year. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and follow Inland Filament on all the social medias, and we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.